So in brief, we're going to teach you how to do a tiger claw. So if you spread your fingers as wide as they can, the most important thing is to spread the thumb and the little finger, push them apart as far as they can. Okay? Now, pull the wrist back. You'll feel those fingers will creep in a little bit, and that's fine. That's the position of those bits. And then curl them all in on the top knuckles. Okay, so there's your tiger claw like this. Right. So spread wide, pull back, and curl in. The difference between this and a dragon's claw is a dragon's claw, the thumb's long, and then it's all curled in like this. And it should make a triangle. Triangle between these three points, an equilateral triangle ideally. Uh -huh. From the side, this is long with the line, and the thumb itself is in a straight line like this and hooked, and not all bent in. So it's straight and then only the top knuckle hooks. So that's the dragon's claw. So tiger claw, dragon's claw. So throughout so this pattern, We'll do those two different ones. And the other thing you're going to look at is the, the posture in the body when you do the tiger moves and when you do the dragon's moves. Okay, the tiger relies on a strong straight back, which actually involves normally moving the scapula around and tensing, tensing the upper part. Like this. You know? it, and it stays like that and it moves like that strong. Whereas the dragon is a much more of an undulation motion. And we're not going to cover that too much in this seminar, but in the snake one we will. Okay, so the first move goes like this, you can follow me like a mirror. Stop the hands by the side, feet together. You can come forwards, at a right at a 45 degree angle, with the elbows pinned into the body. You're going to make the claws, you're going to roll them in tight into a fist, so they go through the claw movement into a fist, fist to the waist. Okay, from the side, Fist is behind the line of the stomach, it's on the floating rib, and in this position, nice and strong and straight. And then we bow. Now the bow it has to be done correctly by pushing the hips back and not leaning forwards. So if I do it incorrectly, I'm leaning into my bow and I'm curling from my back. If I do it correctly, push my hips back, arch and spine, drop down. Okay, so again. Push through, grab, make the claw, pull in. Elbows pinned, long and tight and strong. Arch from the back to do the bow and come back up straight. Emphasize the energy. Drive forwards. Yeah, feel the power through the chest. Tense up the body and pull in strong. This doesn't have to be done quick. It can be done with intention and strength. Same with the bow. Just you need to feel uh, stronger in these techniques. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Next move is a jump. Okay. And we're going to work on the hand technique first, and then the footwork, and then we're going to put it together. In fact, let's work on the footwork first to make it even easier. Okay. Left leg is going to come up in the air. It's going to turn. The right leg is going to come up in the air, and you're going to push out and down like this. Okay. Now, this is different to a same arm. Okay, the same while the foot's forwards and the knee's bent. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the hip in. It's like a side kick, but on the floor. Okay. So one more time, let's try this. This one comes up. This one comes over and in. Push out like a side kick. The hips turn away. Okay. I'm going to show you a bit quicker now. And as you do it, the rear leg is flat. You want to get both knees to the chest. So from here, through. Okay, let's try it. The hand techniques. The hand techniques that go with this one. Uh, I'll, we're going to do one hand at a time. One hand at a time. So forget even the jump or anything else. From here, the left hand is going to come through, over, in, and out. It's going to come across, over, around, in, and out. So you 
touch my elbow, if my elbow goes down. My hand stays where it is, my elbow pivots around if the hand's still there. Pulls in, and then pushes out. Around, out. Scoop in, around, and out. So it's like I'm going to do a urine cue, then a gar, and then a push. And it's going to rest in the upper back position, which is the arms almost entirely straight. So it's not straight out, it's slightly angled up, the claws rounded in. So in my finishing position, it's going to be here like this. So I'll do it now with one hand, as you can see, from here. It looks a little bit different when you put both hands together. All right, let's try it. Okay, so with the right hand this time, we've already done this with the left. The right one, I'm going to have to do it, let's see. The right one's going to come here, back like a sun sound, across like a jap sound, and push this way. So it goes back, around, and through. It is just a changing, just a palm strike. It's as simple as that. The movement is called Chang Fu, which just means like pushing, pressing tiger. It relates to the kick as well, which goes through, but also the palm strike. From here, it draws back. See my body's moving with it, it comes over, my body's moving with it, and it drives out. At the end, you maintain the claw, maintain the eyes, tense in the body. From here, I wind up as the hand comes back. It comes over as I come over and it pushes out. I do the same time as the leg. From here, and I'll lean into it. The other hand's out of the bag. So try it now. Only with the right hand. And the eyes should look straight ahead towards the right hand. Okay. So one of the common mistakes is just thinking you're looking in the right direction, but the head's doing all doing it all wrong. So if I'm here like this, if I do my chance, if you get the hands and everything, my head should be frozen looking forwards. Yeah. Like what we don't want is to have the eye looking forwards and the head just do what it feels like. It feels like it's gone wrong, right? So I need to have this turn with the jump. So let's put all the hands and everything together. So the hand movement alone looks like this. It looks like a flower through almost. So I'm not going to come down, I'm just going to drive it out. And when you do it without the, the jump, it doesn't look quite right. It just looks unusual. But once you do it with the jump, it all starts to make sense. Because the hand is relative to the space you occupy. Like this, up. But as I jump, I can have it lower, but the hand's in the same place, you see? Once I'm here, if I go low, my hands are in the same place, just as if I jump, my hands are in the same place. It's based on the application to the person, so it's almost a punch and you grab, you don't want to lift them up and down when you jump, you want to jump around and through that. So the hands have to be relative to what we did before. So from the side, so, so far we've got roll. Out and the chain okay. right, let's put The next move is a dragon move. So the, the previous move, the chain two, we do that. The fingers being pulled in and everything even and strong. The spine tense at the back, the eyes angry. The next move is a dragon move. So the spine is much more loose, just like the body of the snake. The claw. Is, a, is hooking in with the thumb more, and almost like the two fingers here can hit the eye, can also represent the fangs of the dragon. Okay. Uh, if you know the five of, five of horse, 
this movement should be quite easy, the file of fists as well, even easier. So, from the chain field, I'm going to show you the footwork first. From here, I pull this leg back, I twist stance in, I put my foot down, and I twist stance in. Here, I go one, two. So, if we're using the space, if you watch these mats, uh, hopefully the whole pattern fits within two, two of these mats. So if I started here, like this, I do the chang fu. Now I normally in the chang fu, you'd advance forwards, but I'm going to get you to land in the same position you were standing on. From here, now, no matter how long my chang fu is, when I do my twist arms, it's not going to make a difference. So I pull in, that's half a mat distance. Here, half a mat distance. Let's add that stance work first. It's simple, it's just like the five ball fist for those that know it. It's, it's like the look. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it simple. So from the chain through position, we're gonna work on one hand at a time like we did before. Okay? My right hand and my right foot are linked. You have to imagine it's almost like a, a rod connecting them. So I curl it in. How do I lift? circle it around as I go over. And I grab with the hand and pull down as I come over. Okay? And then as I step, my hand stays above my foot, it comes over, and then again. My hand's going from side to side like this, grabbing. But it must be over my foot. See? Just try and do the first step. Shaping this angle. So it matches perfectly the foot movement.
So let's recap again from the start. Let's just look at the set positions. Chang Fu position, this foot's out at an angle, and this foot's in at a slight angle. The heel's exposed, like I'm doing a side kick. So it's like a side kick position, but on the floor. Okay. Ideally, the knee and the hip are the same level. This leg's pretty much straight. You can have slightly bent, but straight, it's fine. Okay, the hips turn away as you would do in a side kick. Okay, from this angle, you can see my spine. So what I don't want is this. Yeah. But what I don't want also is, is like you know, windsurfing. What I want is the hip stable slightly pushed out and the back arched in slightly and the scapula pulled in tight. So the upper back's strong. Now, from here, I've still not got the full angle. I need to drive in. So I angle the back straight, upright, strong, slightly arched, it tends the spine, and then tilt it. And that's the position of the chain foot with the foot turn. Okay? Look use, twist stance. You should all know this, but ideally, if you want to get a neat twist stance, you line the toes up. So my toe is on that line, and my other toe is on that line. That's the way to lock it in place and get neat. And the knee tucks in nice and gentle. From here, turn the spine in all the way. Body upright, most importantly, the head forwards. So when you do your look use, the head stays stable too. The hand positioning, the Chang Fu hand positioning here, this is completely in a straight line, but it's leaned enough so I get an angle. This is out at the upper back. Again, okay, I don't really have to lift it very high. They could almost be the same, but that tilt of the body and that hand staying up is enough to make it strong and correct. From this angle, I want them slightly forwards, not back. If I was to have my elbows straight, that elbow's in line with the shoulder, and slightly up and raised, as I draw them back, I'll hit a maximum point, because my shoulder blades are going to be pulled around. If I want to go beyond that, what you'll see happens is the shoulder will drop. So you'll see students in this position sometimes, or you see them too high up, or too rounded in. There are classical versions with the hands like this, but we're doing it with a double push. Okay, the lucky position now is one forearm distance, because when you grab a person's wrist, and you strike the forearm, that's the correct distance to do. And you do it on your own body distance. So this distance here, it should measure about the same as my forearm. Here's here. Both elbows are almost straight. This one's arched in. The fingers are facing one side and then the other. So they're separate from each other. So the thumbs are in the same direction. Where my knee is a good point of reference, I want the arm in the middle of my knee. So I've got the wrist, and there's the elbow. The body's upright, turned, twisted, heaving down this way, looking forwards. Ideally, the back leg is flat and the heel is facing up to the ceiling, not down or pushed out, but tensed in. Okay, so do correct yourself. Maybe buddy up a bit and then correct each other as well. All right, give it a go. So the next move uh, from this position here, he's going to go forwards into a lock high muscle. We'll break it down again. We'll just do it the stance work only. I'm going to go forwards long. I'm going to pull myself through into a kneeling horse. Okay, so make sure everyone gets the stance work right. This foot can stay where it is for the moment. I slide long. My foot's facing this way. I drive my knee through. I turn my hip. I shuffle in. Now, if you look at my calf at the moment, it's fully stretched. But what I'll do is I'm going to drive that forwards and sink. My hips are straight forwards. My knee is flat. My knees are pushed out. My calf is flexed this way. Okay, that's the position I'm going to be in. I'm also going to lean on top. So you can see my torso is actually touching my knee. Which actually kind of makes it a little bit easier. It means I get more room forwards. The hands from here are going to pull in. As I go, through, drive, and push. This is striking to the groin, and this palm is striking to the bladder. So groin and bladder. Like this. Here, pull in. And push through. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, so we're going to look you, pulled in, 
we've driven forwards and we've done this one. This one is like the, the mouth of the tiger, so make sure that the, we're joined together with you as a close, so the hands aren't going all over the place. Now the next move, we're going to, we're going to drop back and fall on the floor. Now, to make it easy for you, the lower you fall on the floor, the height, the lower height you are to start with, the better it feels. So if you're jumping up here and you're on the floor, it's going to be hard. So I recommend you slide this foot through, weight bearing on this one, like this. And then it's only a tiny little drop. But if you jump up in the air, <laughs> you're going to know that. So from here, slide this one through and just pluck it back. It's probably the easiest way. If you have a reasonably rigid side here, you let your body go, you'll just be able to kind of rock back. Okay, you can snap down if you want to. I don't normally because of the way it looks in the form. If you want to snap down, it will disperse the energy. If you are going to slap down, make sure this is at a 45 degree angle. But not further out, for the tendency to be to pop the shoulder out of the socket, okay? Don't go down your elbow thinking, oh, you know, because this will be natural to try and make it easier. All you can do is shock the shoulder. So it's tense up and roll back. If you feel you've got weak ribs, it's not going to be easy for you. From here, just put your hands on the floor and lay down. Alright, so let's just look at the easiest solution would be to put the hands down, to take your foot through, lay down, pull them in like that. And let's just pull them in for the moment, maybe let's say keep them so they're almost touching. And knees straight up, and this is your shield. The hands out by the side. So from here, in one movement. Okay, good. Suddenly take a breath. Alright, so we've done a look cue, we've come through with the push, I'm leaning forward, so when I tilt back it makes it easier. I just take my hands out and in, and then I'm going to push out to a side kick. And as I do that side kick, I'm going to tilt into it. There's lots of ways to do the side kick from here. You can even come into a guard if you want to, or you can push it out like a Chang Fu. I just first put the hands on the floor and kick out. You can roll into it. Now, if you roll into it, it's going to make it easier to get off the floor. In the tiger forms, the, the, the traditional forms from the King Moy lineage, they roll over and go onto the knee and kick the heel kick, so like, a, like a back kick. In the Jang Men ones from Wong Gong, they lay there and throw the leg out. So, there's some differences from here. If I go over and kick, it makes it really easy to come up. If I stay on the floor, and sometimes it looks neater, but the get, getting off the floor is a little bit harder, okay? I think it's going to be easier, it's going to look cleaner, to just fall back and throw the leg out. So from here, come back and just throw the leg out. Keep this up tight and closed. All I'm doing is I'm just changing my foot over, tilting it. My hands are still up by the side, my head's looking this way. Okay, that's easy. So all we're doing is from this position here, I take it out. Now, I want you to do that short, it's fine, but I also want you to try and get off the floor from this position by yourself, right, and end up in a horse stance. And then I'll show you how, how to do it, okay? <laughs> so now I'll kick from this position, we're going to go into a horse stance, and we've got to try and get ourselves off the floor. Now, with momentum, it's actually quite a bit easier, but I'm going to try and get to do it just with no momentum. From here, I need to gain control of my posture. I'm going to hook my foot in as close as I can, go onto my knee, and then I'm already there in the horse. And when you apply momentum to it, it's easy. So from here, I sit up. I'm going to try and I pull my foot in. I rock it forwards, go onto my knee, place the ball of my foot, and pop up. I reckon you can probably just do 10 of these. Easy. Alright, give it a go. 
So the hand movement off the ground, where the palms are here, is going to circle the right hand around, up into a gongyu, then a chin out and the elbow, and then a squeeze on the rib. So let's just try this with me. So you face this way, like I am. Hands are here, imagine you're on the floor. So come around. Circle the hand around, and go up, this way, going here. Okay. So it looks, it looks like a chunky, but in, and you're traveling up. And then the other hand comes through, chin up. And then from there, I pull back, turn, and the elbow, and squeeze. Okay. So the claws here. On the floor, circles around. One, two, three. And you can see how the hands are going to mirror and match. When one hand goes up, one hand goes down. Yeah? And when one hand goes forward, one hand goes back. So they're in, in unison. See? Up and down. In and out. Up and down. Up and down. Forwards and backwards. Circle. Gongkyu. Chin out. Palm. Uh, claw. It's motion. And off the floor, it's a little harder, sure. But you know, that's why I don't really want you pushing off the floor. You can a bit. Yeah. But once we're up, we need to circle his hand around as you place the foot. This one comes up as this one comes out, and then it drives up. So from the kick, here, circle around. One, two, three. Gong Q, chin out, grab. Push yourself off the floor this way. Alright. So we come off the floor with a gun cue, which is hit with the blade of the arm. Chin out. Squeeze into the rib. We can turn around now. We can pull the hands through. And we go into a cat stance. You're going to rake across the eyes in both directions. Like this, and sink into the back leg. And cross and rake. You can call it uh, the white tiger looks down the road. You can always tell uh, the, the hidden technique in the movement by its name. Obviously, it's so why is a tiger looking down the road? You know, what's this all about? So it obviously refers to blind and your person, so they can't see what's lying ahead for them. Okay? And as the next move after this, is a leap forward when you fight people at a long range. You know, they're kicking and punching and moving in like imagine fighting someone who's just taekwondo. Well, if you could take the eyesight from them, it's just going to be completely random, isn't it? You get a good grappler, and if he, if he damages his eyes, he's just going to still have you on the floor because he can feel every movement that's going on. But someone that relies on, on sight alone purely to be doing the kicks, you take the eyesight, it doesn't work. So, hints in the name, Wild Tiger looks. Uh, Wild Tiger looks down the road, so I rip the eye, person can't see, and then I can start operating in a long distance fighting style. So, here, back, up, turn, lean back, look ahead, rip through, push the hands out. Make sure you're in a strong cat stance, knees out. You're going to tilt, tilt back and slightly sink into it as you lean away. So the next movement is going to charge forwards. So the hands from here. Left hand stays where it is. Right hand comes through. They raise and they scratch horizontally. Strong, rounded, and sunk. Let's try it. This moves uh, a jump. Double knee into a right back kick. So just with the footwork alone, from here, I go jump, knee, in the air still, knee, land, a uh, third knee, and then kick back. In, uh, maybe, I'm sure it's not too. Is it really three knees? <laughs> yeah, it is, three knees. It's, it represents the foot and past, present, and future. <laughs> There's always three in a form of something. 
So from here like this, jump, on two, land, knee, turn back, but don't like turn around, kick out with the heel. So it's, it's back kick, it's not side kick. If you do a side kick, it's fine. And if you want to do a side kick, it's fine. You haven't got the balance. Yeah. One, two, up and pause, turn, and kick it out. When you use the hands, it's going to be easier for balance. One, two, three, four. Let's try it. You maybe add the hands on the end to help you balance and, and work it through. But from here, the first motion is just one, two. So, right left. And then we step, knee in like this. It's more like a preparation technique for the kick. Now, the hands will shoot forward. So you can just use your hands for the moment to stabilize as you lean. Try to get your body flat as you can. Pull the toe back. So you can use the foot, you're Pull the toe back, reveal the heel. And then the hands are out straight like this. And then look. So that would be ideal in the end position. So, one, two, up, and long. Use the hands to bounce to your Okay, so try and get flat. Hands out like this, which would be good. The head, the legs out like that. And let's look back. Okay, let's try it. Make sure you've got the right position for the tiger looks down the road. I would like the fingers and everything to be facing each other. I'm still seeing a lot of this. So even if I was to tilt my body off, I still want to have them in, on that flat level. It's very much like a road is flat. And here, the hands are going to not really do too much. They go down and go outside, like with the body. And the body comes up from the knees, they come up, up the front side. Then they go down again as I go down, and they pull in to here. So it looks like this. It looks like this. But really, it's just this. In a way. Normal cue, roll fist to the waist, 
It's time to close the waist. We jump over, close the waist, and go to a tiger foot. So from here, I'm going to push my palms back, I'm going to do a brain kick. Then I'm going to come back down, lock up, and do a gong drum. Just like it is in the five ball fist. So from the tag claw, pull cue, fujao, come through, groin kick, step back, lock through, gong drum. Yeah, walk, deep. Yeah. So we work here in the kick, we jump it through, walk, deep. Yep, the next move is going to go off on a diagonal. Now, you don't have to do it at a 45 degree angle. In fact, I prefer it if you go off at about a 27 degree angle. <laughs> or thereabouts, because it will fit nice and neat and it will give more space for everyone else. From here, the footwork is this open up this foot, go into a cat stance, then open up that foot and go into a cat stance. Yeah? So, cat stance diagonal. Cat stand time. The hand movement from the gondron is as the foot opens, this comes through, hooks underneath, come through, grab, open up, hook, come through, grab. If anyone knows uh, some of the more advanced forms in the trolley foot, there's different variations on form. Uh, there's a this way, and it's this way in a lot of day ones, where you're kind of really low. Backwards cat stance, where you're reaching forwards. I'll show you from a different angle, you'll see it better. In the gong joint, from here, the hands come back, I come through, I hook the leg, I pull it out to the side as I go deep through the motion here and strike the groin, and I do the same again. Obviously, the lower you can go in that cat stance, the, the more realistic it will look. Like this is, you know, sure it works, but you rely on the person like kicking up here and you're like, it's not quite the same. So from here, one, two, one, two. The striking hand is a longer hand. Long jump, pull back, shoot it once out, block and hook, go along for the groin, pull it back, shoot it once out. Block the leg, go along for the groin. This is the movement. Okay. Alright, let's try it. Okay, so we've done the walk things here. We're right here, we've done the two grabs. Now I'm going to turn around and go back on the diagonal. So my foot we're going to step out, and I'm going to twist in. Simple. So I'm in a cat stance here, I take my cat stance foot back, like I'm going through a horse stance, and I go into a twist. The movement of the hands is going to be knapsack grab, coming over, grabbing like the look you, so I'm going to roll into the ball, like I'm holding the ball here. So the motion will look like this. And that goes into twist arms. So from here, from here, I can over, and I take it this way. Hold on. One, two, yeah, it's right here. I take it back, hold the one, scoop it. Tuck it in, two. Show you from a different angle. If I go here, one, two. Take it back, hook, come over, and sink. In this direction, here, and put them together, hook. Over. Nice and low, tiny and small. Yeah. The idea of the dragon can be as large as it wants to be, or it can be as small as it wants to be. Okay, let's try it. Ooh. So, 
So we've turned and holding the ball, and we're going to jump back along that diagonal with a kick. So if I was here, like this, on this diagonal, I've turned, and I've gone onto this diagonal, and then we're actually going to have to do, we're not going to do the kick, yet, because there's one more move before the kick. I'm going to step along that diagonal, turn a little twist on slope, my rib cage is touching my thighs again, I'm going to come back up into a double tiger claw this way, so looking in that direction. So from here, you go grab, step, you uncross the arms, sink, and rip up this way. Chest on the chest on the, on the knee. So if I'm on a straight line here, I'm down, my chest's on my knee, I'm leaned over, I'm looking behind myself, this time we're on a diagonal. I'll show you from a different angle. If I turn back like this way, I go diagonal, I whip it through, and I come up here. Now if you look at my back, my shoulders at the same level and height, like that, and not like this, and certainly not like that, and not like this. So from here, if I don't move them, I go into my twist stance, I sink it down as far as I can, and then I rotate. I put in my chest on my stomach. Otherwise, what happens is you get, I don't know, it just doesn't look right. So here, like this is the position we want. Okay, let's add that one. Double tiger cord. Sponsoring any problems. Right. So the hand movements for the, for the kick are, are very simple. I'm not going to do the kick, but I will show you the hand movements. From here, this one comes down, and then they're both even. They come up even. Crossing the air like a, like a upper gun gym coming through and push out. And so I'm in this position here, double tiger. I'm going to end that position then in a chain. Basically, I'm going to do this. I'm going from here to here the long way. So I come down and it helps lift me up. I'm in the air, I cross and I push through. So, literally, just walk yourself through that movement. Get it right and I'll put it all together for you. Okay, that's right. Okay, so we've done the kicks, they've done the grabs to the groin here and here. We come over, we wound it up, brought it through, and I'm going to bring it back. So I want to try and keep both legs straight. So it's like a full crescent kick and in. Again, here. Hands are coming through. I'll show you from different angles so make it easy to see on the camera. In this position here. Alright, let's try it. So we jump through. I'm going to change the angle of this just so you can see it easier. And we're doing our triangle through here. I'm going to do a cross stance, still on the diagonal. Whatever angle you happen to be, it doesn't matter what you set as your angle as long as you stick to it. From here, I'm going to roll through, cross down, Pum here, back to the same one again, chin chin. So there's my chance to move. Cross stance on the diagonal, which is easy. I'll roll Pum to the waist, and I try and bring my hand around and through, past the center line, so it's quite a stretch. Stepping it through, hand to the ear. Open out to a same arm this time, chin chin. Now, same arm, the feet are off the diagonals, like this. My knees bent slightly, this is flat, my body's upright. So it's different to a, to a ding chin arm. Uh, ding chin arm like this, this is different to a, to a chang fu style position here like this. The same arms like this, my body tilts it back, I'm going to curve in and hook. My elbow is in line my body, my fist straight. I'm striking here, like that, and I'm looking back. Chang Fu, angle the foot's in, come through, Kung Kyu, Chin Chin. Here, like this, Chin Chin, whatever angle we want. Kung Kyu, Chin Chin. So we've gone back, Kung Kyu, Chin Chi, 
we're going to do the pong cue again, and we're going to try to flip back where it was. So I was here with the pong cue, I went to the chin cue, and I'm going to go back to this position. So you're actually, I'm just reversing the step. From here, this is fine, everyone's got that. Chin chi, and then I come back again. So my hand's just doing this all the time. From the chang fu, from here, chin chi, from here, up. So the footwork is going to be cross, same arm. Back again, tau ma, and lock by ma. Pung kyu, chin chi. Back away again, pung kyu. This hand's going to come under and over your mind. position here, like this, I pull the hands back, I stay low, I crouch down, I can overbeat with the motion, I go into the same arm, and I sink down, back straight, knees, this thing's definitely bent, this one's bent a little bit, Both the toes are facing the opposite direction, I'll show you from the other side to make it easy to see, from the yom up here, I stay low on my knee, and drive myself back, go high, like I'm literally drawing the shape of a rainbow, sink down, place the hands in this lucky position, back straight. Movement is called the dragon embraces the rainbow and sinks into the ocean. All right, so pretty much it's there. <laughs> okay, it goes back, stops the rainbow here, still low, it embraces the rainbow, so it draws the rainbow in the sky, and then it sinks into the ocean. Okay, alright, let's have that. Okay. So from the yung one here, I pull back, and over, sink, hook in. Tau mo, double claw, salute, roll, and bow. Here. Pause, salute, roll, down. One more time to sit in here, pull back, in, sink it long, crunch in, kick your leg through. Okay, let's see if we can finish up.